Hi everyone, welcome back to Procrastinator Podcast. It's a podcast where I talk about things that I'm knitting and other yarn-related things. Yeah, I mean, it's been a minute since my last episode, but unfortunately I haven't knit that many, <laughs> that much. So um, I, sh I will show you what I have been knitting on, but yeah, the updates are a little bit sparse. Um, I also didn't do, so today is November 28th, Cyber Monday, and surprisingly I didn't do any yarn shopping, so that's good I suppose. I went up to my cousin's for Thanksgiving, and I also did not um, buy yarn at the local yarn shop up there, but I did take my cousin, and she liked it I think, so, and I think she watches the channel now, so Hi Michelle, if you are watching, but, oh shoot, I just lost the stitch. <laughs> um, yes, I will talk to you about what I have been knitting on and my future plans. Yeah, I, have, I didn't buy any yarn, so I feel pretty proud of myself. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll just talk about what I have been knitting on. So first and foremost... <gasps> progress on this sock finally um <laughs> okay bye bye so i made progress on this sock this is where i used to be and this is where i'm at now so i'm at the toe decreases it should go by pretty fast this is ode to barbara the pattern is ode to barbara by summer lee designs it's my first lace sock pattern so i'm really excited about how this is going to turn out i think i might have made the foot a little long so i don't know we'll see should i try it on now right now i'm wearing these which i knit um yeah basically a year a year ago now last thanksgiving is when i knit those you know what i think it's good i think it's good perfect i love three by one rib. I just think it looks so good. So, okay, that's good. That is good to know. So this is still the first in the pair, so I still have quite a bit left. The yarn I'm using is Malabrigo Comfort, no, 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 Malabrigo Ultimate Sock, which I'm really liking. So yeah, it's, um, it has nylon in it, and then this is their Malabrigo Sock, which doesn't have nylon. But yeah, I wear my socks to my cousins um, over Thanksgiving break and it was really nice because it, it was chilly up there and my socks kept me warm and I got lots of compliments. So yeah, that was a good time. But yeah, those are my socks. And actually, yeah, if you notice, I'm using Magic Loop for the toe. Uh, yeah, I used to do I used to do only Magic Loop and then I switched to Circulars and DPNs and now I'm back to Circulars and Magic Loop. I don't know, I just like it again. I think because I was knitting Magic Loop for so long, I just like was tired of it. But now that I don't do Magic Loop that often, I'm like, you know what? It's good and it's, um, it's really nice cable management. Um, DPNs are pretty easy too. I haven't really had many instances of things falling off the needle, but Magic Loop, I always feel super secure. So that is that. You know, I was gonna get myself needles for Black Friday, but they weren't even on sale. So I was like, I shouldn't. Anyways, my next whip, which I just found out has gotten extended. So I'm very grateful because I actually felt a little stressed about this deadline. It's my test knit for M's Knits on Instagram. She just changed her username from Eames Knits to M's or maybe M Knits. I'm not sure. Uh, not completely sure, but here it is. Last time we talked, I was still working on finishing up the bottom. Since last time, I've sewn it, so this was really long, like double this length, and then I have since done the whip stitch on the inside, and that's the first time I did whip stitch. 
Um, and I think it, it turned out all right. I think, I don't know, it kind of flares in a weird way. I'm not sure if that's my technique or what. But there it is. I'm sure with blocking, it'll come out uh, a little bit uh, more even and nicer, but still, I really like it. It's a thick, it's double knitted, essentially, or it's two pieces of fabric. So it's nice. I like that. It looks like a very finished edge. I guess my only, like, gripe with it is this sort of situation here. But I think that's just with any double knit or fold over thing. It's just gonna have that look. So I, I don't think that's anything to do with the pattern or method or anything like that. But as you can see, I have started on the sleeve. I had hoped to finish, I'd hoped to finish a lot more of this sweater over break. Oh, I got a haircut. Um, still trying to figure it out. Styling wise, as always. But Anyways, oh man, I had hoped to get a lot more of this done than I have um, over break. So it looks like I have a lot left, quite a bit left. Um, these are to mark my decrease rounds. So I am decreasing every certain amount of rows or rounds as dictated by the pattern. I'm not sure if I picked up too many stitches for the sleeves. I don't think I did, but it is kind of flaring out a bit, right? In a weird way. What do you think? Oh man. That's not ideal. Oh no. No. Because that would suck. That would actually suck. That would suck real hard. What do you think? I don't know. Whatever, I think I'm just going to have to knit it until it's done, and then I can really say. Um, but yeah, so it was originally due next week, or maybe at the end of this week, and that's not going to happen. So she's extended it another week, so I have two more weeks to do this. So I'm, I think it's doable, I think I can do it, but it's just, oh man. It's taking so long. It's really taking a very long time, but you know, so far I'm happy with it. Um, doing a test knit has definitely taught me a lot. Oh no, I don't know if that's just the seam or if I actually picked up too many stitches. Jenna, what do you think, girl? Do you think I picked up too many stitches? Does it look like bulky? <gasps> No, I think I might have. Oh man. Oh no. I haven't tried it on before. Oh no. I might give up and do the placket right now. Because the sleeve thing is bothering me. I do think I picked up too many. I do think I picked up too many. But I don't know, did I? Yeah, right? Because I feel like... Man. Well, I guess the good thing is this means that when I pick it up again, it's going to be significantly less um, things to knit. But I mean, this was a lot. This was a lot of knitting. So... I am not thrilled about that at all. I'm not very thrilled about that at all. Yeah, right? Like, I know the cables make it look bigger than it is as well, but... <gasps> Shoot. I just lost my magic loop. Whatever. I guess I was gonna rip this back anyways. Yeah, I think that's one too many. Okay. Well, the decision has been reached, so... That is a very sad realization that we have just come to, but it's okay. So that's, yeah, that's about um, the update I have. I have about this much of the blue left and one full ball of the blue left. So I think, yes, I will have plenty of yarn. This is the brown, but I have two more of these. I think I have two more 
on like so yeah i should have enough i should have enough for everything i just oh wow okay i'm glad i did this episode so that i could like do this because that was definitely way too many stitches okay great i also was gonna get myself a circular set so that i could do these on circulars but i don't know maybe i'll have a look and maybe they'll be on sale i didn't really look but i have a feeling i have a feeling the sale will not be very great at all so yeah yeah i don't know this is not the vibe this is not the vibrations that i was going Yeah, it's just too big. Okay, so those are all my whips. Those are that's everything I have to talk to you about. I haven't finished anything. I am feeling the stress of the holidays. I rewatched some of my old videos and realized I talk about lots of knitting plans that have not been fulfilled. They've kind of been taken over by this knit. So yeah, I don't know. A lesson learned for sure. Um, something I am hoping to cast on though is this. <clears throat> it's hard to get the right color. But it's basically it's basically a light purple. Oh, I don't think it's showing up at all unless my screen is just looking weird. But it's a light purple with some pinks and blues and yellows in there. Um, it's gonna be a hat for my mom. The the yarn is dye is cast. I got it in Philly, and yeah, I'm really really excited about it. If it ever gets to be on the needles, I think I'm gonna do a, a muscle burra. A muscle burra. I've never done a muscle burra. <laughs> Everyone talks about the muscle burra, and I think. Now is the time to do a muscle wear. Okay, well, that was 13 whole minutes, um, but that's all I had to share with you knitting wise. I think, uh, what's going been going on in my life lately? What is media I can talk to you about? I think I told you I finished Love is Blind. Jenna's looking at me weird. Um, Jenna made me start this K-drama called True Beauty. It's pretty dramatic, all right. I used to be into K-dramas when I was Jenna's age, and now I've, like, moved on from them. But the K-dramas are good. Like, they're popular for a reason. So, yeah, it's definitely fun to watch. And what else? Oh, I do. I did want to share this. Okay, well... If you are my mom, do not watch this. Man, do not watch this. Then God, God, can I please? Okay. Can I look back on me? Okay, do not watch this. <laughs> okay. So, if you're my mom, you're not watching this. If you're Joy, do not watch this either. So, I got these at Trader Joe's. They're felted balls. They're wool felted balls. Um, just felted together, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's how they're held together. They're so awesome. I My first encounter with them was at uh, my boss's house. My uh, The ceramicists that I am a studio assistant for. She has one of these at her house. I just thought they were literally the cutest thing ever. I was like, where'd you get those? And she said one of her friends made it for her. So I never thought I would just encounter them in the wild because I've never seen these before. But it's just so fun. I love it so much. And yeah, they're yarny related. So I thought I'd share. If your Trader Joe's has them, you should get them. They make a good trivet, a thing to put your, you know, pots and hot pots and pans on or just a coaster if you really want a big coaster or um thing you can put your planters on or just pretty much anything. I mean, you can even hang this. This could be wall art, you know. It's just awesome. So, 
that is a new acquisition. That's it for yarny things. Um, what other things have I been watching? Nothing much really. Gilmore Girls. I'm still on Gilmore Girls. I tried watching Love Island and it was really bad. Like, I was not into the- I still don't understand the concept. It just felt weird to me. Um, we put up a Christmas tree recently. It looks really nice. I don't know. I think that's it. I think that's about it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I guess I want to update. I went up to my cousin's house and I think I reignited her knitting journey. So that was very nice. And now I feel like I have a knitting buddy and she's been watching my old episodes and commenting on stuff. So thanks, Michelle. And yeah, just very excited. I took her to the yarn store. That was very fun. Um, okay. Hi, welcome back. I felt like Oh, my hair's growing. Um, hi, welcome back. I felt like the podcast I filmed was really short, so yeah, I guess I just wanted to pop back in and give tiny updates and then publish the two updates together as one episode, I guess. So um, yeah, I think it's about a week after I filmed the last clip that you will have just seen, and uh, yeah, so today's December 4th. I'm wearing a beanie I made my dad for Christmas last year. I'm not sure if this actually showed up on the pod, but I mean, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's the Pearl Soho, Pearl Soho Free Hat Pattern. And um, this is, I'm holding two strands of yarn together. It's a, a tweed yarn from Knit Picks and Barocco Comfort DK. So it's actually quite warm, despite it being 50% acrylic. The Barocco is acrylic. Um, but yeah, it's really warm. I really like it. I steal it all the time, and I think it's just an awesome hat, awesome pattern. I love the one by one rib, so. I definitely want to make more hats because I feel like they're so useful. This is my first winter in California in four years, so it's actually nice that the weather is chilly. It's definitely not east coast cold, but it is chilly enough to wear. It's actually kind of nice because I can wear my knits as outer layers, I guess, and throughout the day too, um, instead of having to wear a coat over my knits as well. So um, it's actually pretty great. I can knit things and not feel too 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 bad about using wool and not ha finding an occasion for them. Um, okay so I have some some updates some updates. So first we have Miss Winona Polo. So yeah in the last clip I've tried it on for you and I realized the sleeves were just way it was just too big flared out too much so then I redid it I my sneaking suspicion is I actually picked up too few stitches this time around but I'm not complaining and um I'm just gonna keep knitting and I think in the pattern there's a certain amount of number of decreases that you do or uh, that sort of thing, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to share uh, the exact rate of decreases, but there is a rate of decreases I think I might have to stop early because honestly, this is getting quite uh, thin. <laughs> it's getting quite tight. It's not tight yet. It's still like oversized, but I, yeah, I just have a feeling I will not, um, decrease to the specifications of the pattern but yeah I mean I I the reason I say I think it's a little too few stitches is because of this but I maybe that would happen anyways because I feel like that happened last time too except last time this like was way flared out like this almost so um I'm happy with that it's going faster because it's it's like 50 fewer stitches than last time <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, the pattern suggests 
you know, pick up every X amount of stitches out of X amount of stitches, that sort of thing. Um, like, for example, pick up two stitches every three stitches, you know what I mean? Um, but I, ju I did not do that. I can never tell. I can never count my stitches on sleeves. So what I usually do for sleeves is I pick up almost, I, I guess it depends on what it calls for. Like if it calls for every other stitch, then I'm not going to do what I'm about to tell you I do. But um, if it's, yeah, I guess if it's more than half of the stitches, I usually pick up more stitches than I need almost every stitch. And then I... Or I try to get close to what the pattern calls for and then I go back and I look at all the stitches I've picked up on my cable and I decide how many stitches should be there etc and then when I go to knit that first round or row from the picked up edge I will drop some of the stitches that I have picked up if that makes sense so that is usually the method to my madness of picking up uh, sleeves, Pick, picking up for the sleeves. It's definitely not my favorite uh, to do. So maybe I'm a raglan gal. I don't know. I don't think I've knit enough tops to say for sure. But uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to need a good number of, I think it's, it's actually supposed to be kind of a tight cuff, which is not my go-to. So we'll see. We'll see as I decrease how, how I'm feeling about the sleeves. But so far, um, it's going well. I, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous about making the deadline, but she said if worse comes to worst, uh, we just need to finish one sleeve and the collar just so that, just so that we like have read through the instructions for the sleeves and it makes sense and uh that kind of thing so you know that's the worst case scenario so actually after this leave i will work on the collar um <sighs> but i just fear that we'll just make sleeve island that much worse i'm actually thinking of working on the collar like right now so i don't know but i think i will do a half and half collar that is what the original pattern calls for but if you don't feel like doing intarsia you can just do it in one solid color but i think i will do half and half for the color um so yeah that's my update on that uh yeah okay and uh what else do we have to share and you know like the truth is not much the truth is not much but you know a little bit which is why I added in this segment. <laughs> and you saw this sock, it was here. And now it has been done, it's finished. And I am this far into sock number two. And I did all this while subbing, so love that. Yeah, I subbed yoga and like study hall one day. <laughs> so that was, uh, where the bulk of this progress has come from and uh yeah let me move my stitch progress marker that i made diy um okay let us see where shall we put you There we go. So that's my new progress. But something that I realized when I finished the sock that I didn't realize the entire time I was knitting the sock. Let's see if you can realize. Okay. So, um, yeah, the realization is that there are three cables on one side and two or I mean, three sets of ribbing, I guess, and two on this side. So it's not evenly distributed, and I don't think, and I thought I had done something wrong, but I actually, I don't think there was anything I could have done, because the foot is in stockinette. So eventually, I mean, this is just how the math works out. And then I looked in the pattern, 
pictures and I think um yeah I think it looked like this for for the picture too so that was a relief that I didn't do anything wrong but I mean in the picture it was like you know because this is the sock pattern so unless I read it wrong I don't know because in the picture it did look like this where it was you know on the on this side of the sock so this is the beginning of round so toward the beginning of round there's two there's two sets of ribbing and then three on the other side um and it looked like that for both socks but I thought you know why not make a right sock and a left sock so um for this pair I did three repeats of the um ribbing and then the lace stitches and then two or and then I mean for the leg it's all uh, ribbing all the way around but I'm hoping that when I go to do the gusset what should happen is that when, by the time I get to the foot it'll just you know be a mirror of this so like you know you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so then when the two socks are together it'll be like three lace two and then the other sock will be two lace three does that make sense okay I don't know um, but yeah, so th these are my socks. I like them quite a bit. Let me put one on for you. I've also been wearing my socks lately around the house, outside, like when I go out. And it's been really lovely to wear them. And I've been wearing my knits too to work. And every so often I'll get a compliment. Um, and I'll be able to say that I made myself and that's pretty awesome. Okay, so here they are. <laughs> these are the sock. I'm on the second one, which feels oh so good because I do want these to be done. I love vanilla socks. I mean, textured socks are a good time, but vanilla socks are just, you know, like a simple ribbing. It will always have my heart. I think the next one I want to do actually, ugh, actually, I mean, I think the next one I want to do is going to be a vanilla just stockinette sock, but in the new near future will be a completely two by two rib sock. I think that will be good because I knit a, a three by one and yeah, I guess that's it. I've not knit a two by two. Um, and I think I'm just going to do it the entire thing two by two, except for the foot with a stockinette at the bottom. But, um, yeah, like when I did the three by one socks, I did not, um, the, uh, the cuff I did in one by one, but I think, you know, in the future, I could definitely just do it in the ribbing the entire way. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the yarn is really nice to work with, as I've said many times, so would recommend, would recommend. Something else, not yarn related, but... <gasps> Today I am drinking from my, uh, let's see. Hail Ceramics mug, cup, I guess. Um, I'm a studio assistant for Karen, who is the person behind Hail Ceramics. Uh, she's based in LA, so I go to LA like once a week and I help her with uh, orders and stuff like that. So yeah. These are really beautiful mugs, cups, whatever. I love them. Um, she has really fun colorways up on her web shop. So I will link it down below if you want to support and get a cup. It's supporting me as well because it helps her pay me to help her. Um, but yeah, she's doing a couple. If you're, I, I don't know, I don't think anyone's in Orange County, but if you are, you should give her Instagram a follow and see when her markets are in the next couple weeks. And you can go, and I'm going to be at a market helping her, so maybe you could come see me. But I really don't think anyone is in Orange County, but that's okay. Anyways, this is one of the colorways that I came up with. So I was just messing around, nothing, not, not very, uh, you know, not too many thoughts, but I really like these colors together. And of course, I love color. So yeah, I think, I mean, it's a fun project. Um, so... Yeah, 
lots of other cool things on the shop too. I made a couple of planters. Um, yeah, they're all they're all her designs, but you know, I help produce them, I guess. And uh, it's like the best job I've ever had. I love it. So it's really fun. And this is one of the cups you can get in one of my colorways. And there's another one as well. Okay, let's see. This one. I, you know, if I had favorites, this is my favorite out of the two. But this is still a fun, funky colorway. It feels very 2000s to me. And um, I kept thinking candy when I was like trying to figure out a name for it or, you know, she was like asking me to think of an emotion that this evoked and I was just like, it just reminds me of candy. I can't figure out why. And then the other day, I think Joy was like, that's watermelon. <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> so my freshman year of college and I guess, you know, just around that time, I was really obsessed with watermelon sour patch. <laughs> so I like ordered like a box of like 50 pouches from like Costco, you know, like a bulk size box of watermelon sour patch. And I would just be popping them constantly, constantly eating watermelon sour patch. And fun fact, William claims that my boyfriend claims that I like conditioned him <laughs> to hang out with me because every time we'd see each other, I'd give him a packet of watermelon sour patch um but yeah i just thought that was a funny story but yeah so i think in my reign somewhere i was like watermelon sour patch um is the true inspo behind this so yeah i don't know yeah it, it just feels very childhood early 2000s this colorway to me um, and this is really beautiful. I mean, you can't like touch it, but it's like a rough, not rough, but it's uh, not a glossy texture on the outside. It's the raw clay. Feels really nice against your hand. I love the feeling of clay and um, just like exploring the the tactile nature of it, I guess. And then the inside is so, sorry, I'm just like holding trinkets in it right now, <laughs> but the inside is smooth with this like white uh glossy liner glaze and it's just beautiful right now i'm drinking a tea in it or else i okay i finished so i can show you but oh <laughs> but yeah it's just really beautiful i'm really proud of everything i've made there and yeah it's just super super awesome so if you want to support a local business during the holidays you should definitely go to hailceramics.com um and then i think you have to click on her web shops app i think she's having like issues with the website but let me know if you have questions and then the last little update i wanted to show just for funsies not like serious is this <laughs> uh it's a little orange from our orange tree. I mean, I think it's probably called something else. It's like not an orange. It's like a, it's like Mandarin adjacent. You know what I mean? One of these Asian citrus fruits. But I mean, it's so good. And it's so easy to peel. You know, like sometimes they're not easy to peel. But this is always so easy to peel. I just love it. Our tree is, um, you know, really thriving right now. You know what? As I said, this is easy to peel. This one is actually not easy to peel. Like, it's crumbling. Um, but, yeah, I just love life right now. It's just really awesome. I've been really busy. I'm almost done with that last video illustration, video editing job. Um, and that has been uh, quite a challenge. Fun, but draining at the same time very time consuming, haven't been able to uh, put a lot of work into my grad school applications. So that is what is coming up in the next couple weeks. I also want to do clay because uh, there are some presents that I would like to get fired before Christmas so I can give them to people. Um, oh my gosh, look how little, so cute. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you're up to. I hope you have a really great holiday season. And um, yeah, 
you know what? My cousin passed down her old Kindle to me and I'm gonna try to get back into reading, but I doubt that will happen for me, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. So I think that's, you know, a brief, a brief update on my life recently. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you in the next one. Let me know what you're working on or what your life is like lately. Um, share something nice that happened or something you're struggling with or uh, anything at all. And hi Michelle to Michelle who binged all my videos. That's super awesome. Okay, I will see everyone in the next video. Oh, you can follow me on Instagram at Taoyum underscore for my art Instagram, it's Jane Huynh. Um, but Taoyum underscore is where I share my knitting. So that's probably the one you want. Um, okay, have a good one. Bye.